So when it comes to web scraping in R, should you use Rvest or should you use R Selenium? Well, it really comes down to the website that you're scraping, but in a lot of instances, you can actually use both packages to your advantage to scrape websites. Hi everyone, my name is Samer. I work in data analytics, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can web scrape dynamic tables from websites using both Rvest and R Selenium. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's get started by looking at the website we want to web scrape. So this is the Texas Tribune website, which contains data on employees that work at government agencies in Texas. The, de the specific table we're looking at is from the Department of Public Safety, which has a list of its employees, their titles, what agency they're working at, and then their annual salary. So our goal here is to scrape this table and then, as you notice, you have 200 pages. So we want to flip through each page, scrape all those tables, and then combine them into one large data set, which contains all the employees with all their salaries. So let's get straight into the code. So first off, you're going to have to load in the necessary packages. So I'm going to highlight all of these lines, and I'm going to run it. Next, we want to set up our, our Selenium server so that we can control our web browser. So we're going to do that by creating an object called RS driver object. And I'm going to set it equals to the RS driver function from our Selenium. And there are a few parameters we want to pass in, one being the browser. And we're going to set that equals to Chrome. Next, we want to use the Chrome version. And for the Chrome version, the way to identify that is by going into your Chrome browser, opening a new tab, and typing in Chrome colon slash slash version. And you're going to notice that your version is at the top. You only need to be concerned with the first digits that come before the first decimal point. So since it's 103, that's what we're concerned with. And then you can use the list versions function, which comes from binman. And we're going to pass in Chrome driver. Well, actually, we need to type in binman list versions, Chrome driver. And this is going to give us a list of the applicable Chrome drivers for your Selenium server. So we have two instances of the 103 version. And generally speaking, you want to go off of the latest one. So I'm going to take this version. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to paste it in here. Next, I'm going to set the verbose parameter to false so that we can suppress any messages. And last but not least, I will set the port equals to free port, which will find me a free port on my machine to run my Selenium server on. And this comes from the NetStat package. So I will run this. And it loads up a new Selenium server for us, which by default opens up a web browser. But we can close out of this because we need to access the client side of this. In order to do that, I will create a remdr object. And I'm going to set it equals to rs driver object. And I'm going to access the client side of this object. So now we have our client object ready and stored in the remdr object. So I'm going to set that uh, to the open function. And what that is going to do is it will launch a web browser for us, which says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. So let's go ahead and navigate to the site. So I'm going to do that by using the navigate function, and I'm going to pass in the URL, which is right over here. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it. If we open up our automated web browser, you can see that now the website has loaded. Great. Now I need to go ahead and inspect the elements of the table. So I will go ahead and right click and click on inspect. I'm going to click on the cursor over here and I'm going to click on any of the elements within the table. And if you keep scrolling up, you're going to notice that the table is right here. And the table has an ID of this value. So since we already have the ID, I will go ahead and use the ID as our identifier um, for this table. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to type in the find element function. So that is remdr find element and I'm going to set the using parameter equals to x to actually ID. And then I'm going to pass in the ID of that table. And I'm going to store this all in an object called data table. So I'm going to run that. There we go. Next, I want to go ahead and inspect the, the next buttons. So I want to inspect how do I flip through the pages. So I want to look at the next button. And it turns out that this is actually an A tag, which acts as a hyperlink. And it has an attribute of aria label equals to next page. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy it. 
and I'm going to use a slightly different method of finding the element. I'm going to set as equals to remdr find element using xpath. And this is a method for um, locating elements, a pretty advanced method for locating elements. And I'm going to start it off with two slashes, and I'm going to type in the name of the tag, which is a, open up a bracket, and then type in at aria label equals to whatever the aria label value is. So what this translates into is look within the entire document for the a tag where the aria label attribute of that a tag is equal to next page. And I'm going to store that in an object called next button. So I'm going to run that. And there we go, we have it. So let's go ahead and test it out. So I want to run this side by side. And I want to showcase that this actually does work. So if you're going to, so I will type it in here. I'm going to type in next button, dollar sign, click element. And if you notice on the right side, whenever I do run this, it will flip through the pages. So I will run it, then run it again. As you can see, it's now flipping through the pages every time I click on it. Great. So now we know that this is working. OK. Now we do have the contents of the data table. But how do we go about actually putting this in a, in a data table format? Uh, because in R Selenium, we can't necessarily do that. This is where the um, HTML table function comes into play from the RVS package. So we're going to start off by uh, getting the HTML of that um, data table. So I'm going to say data table HTML, and I'm going to set that equals to data table dollar sign get page source. So this is the page source that we have. So if I were to just take this code and run it, it's going to give me the HTML code of the data table. So that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And then I am going to create a page object. And I'm going to set that equals to read HTML. And I'm going to pass in the data table HTML. And after doing that, I am going to actually uh, unlist it because generally speaking, whenever you read it as an HTML, it usually comes in the form of a list. So we want to unlist it so that it can read it properly. So if I were to highlight this and run it, it's actually going to give us the HTML, which is exactly what we need. So I'm going to run that. And then now we can go ahead and store this in a table. So I'm just going to call this DF. And I'm going to set that equals to HTML table. And I am going to uh, pass in our page. And then for the page, I am going to go ahead and just run this and see what it gives us. So as you can see, it gives us actually a list with two tables. So it appears that actually, if we look back at our site, it appears that this is actually also a table, which falls under the same ID. So if I go ahead and inspect it, and I look at this table, we'll notice that it has the same ID as the table we looked at here below. So this is causing us to, uh, to extract two tables. So in this case, we just need the second one. So I'm just going to simply go into page right here and I'm going to call it number two, or actually I will actually run this and then actually go into DF two over here. And this is the table that we need. So I will actually go ahead and pipe this into there like that. And then it should actually work for us. So if we look at DF right now, it just gives us the table that we're interested in. Okay, great. Now we've gone through a lot of steps. Now, one of the things is we also want to consolidate this data into one data set. So what I need to do over here is I will go inside and I will create an empty data set and I'll call this all data and I'm going to set it to an empty list actually. And then what I want to do is I want to go into all data. I'm going to set it equals to our bind list. And then I want to open up the list function and then pass in the all data and then pass in DF. So if I were to run this and then look at the data, so view all data, we're going to notice that the data from the DF has been appended to the all data. So essentially we want to loop through each page and then append it to the all data. So I'm just going to go ahead and empty out the all data list. And now 
we need to get started with creating the loop. Now one of the issues that may arise over here is what happens if you get to the end of the page. So if you get to the last page on the site, you're going to notice that the next button disappears. So this is going to cause an error if we try to look for it. So right now I'm on the 200th page. If I try to run the next page, it's going to give me an error because the element is not found. So we need to create a try catch statement with an R to make sure that we're catching this error once it gets to the end of the end of the site so that we can terminate the program and let it know that we've collected all the data. So I'm going to go ahead and do that by creating a try catch. And within the try catch, I want to go ahead and test out uh, the statement that we need to run, which would be these two over here. So I'm just going to take these and I'm going to test these out. So then in the case of an error, you're going to type in an error function. And I'm going to set the error equals to function E. I'm going to open up a curly brackets. And then what we want to do over here is we want to print a message to the user saying uh, script complete. And then we also want to set the cond variable equals to false. And what this is, is we're going to we're going to essentially put this all in a while loop and we're going to set the cond value equals to true by default. So we're going to set the cond value equals to true. And it's going to keep looping while this cond object is true. Uh, but once it becomes false, we're going to terminate the loop. And the reason why I used a super assignment is because whenever you're working within the try catch statement, the scope that it's working in is, is a smaller scope. So that's why we use the super assignment so that it get, so that the cond object becomes uh, assigned in the global environment. So now it's going to have the value of false. Um, after that, we are going to uh, finish with the try catch and then follow it with an if statement saying if cond equals to false, then we want to break out of the loop. So we want to put all of this in a while loop. So that's going to be while cond equals to true. And then I'm going to go ahead and take all of this code and I'm going to cut it and paste it right in here. So it seems that we have everything we need. So I'm just going to go ahead and run this all data to clear it out and set the cond equals to true and make sure that we are sitting on the very first page. So I'm going to run these side by side and also just to make sure that we're not overwhelming the server. We need to make sure that when we're flipping through pages, we have to set a very small break just so that we can consume the HTML content successfully. And to do so, I will use the sys.sleep function and set it to uh, 0.2 seconds. So I will go ahead and run this side by side with our table and I will zoom out of it just so that you can see the entire thing like that. And then I will run the script. As you can see, it's flipping through the pages and we will come back to it once it finishes looping through all the pages. Okay, so the script is now complete. And as you can see, because it reached the end of it, um, it printed out the message script complete. Now, unfortunately, there's no way of suppressing the Selenium error messages, uh, but at least we can tell that the script has now been uh, terminated and uh, now we've collected all the data. So now let's go ahead and take a view of our data. So if we look at all data, we can notice that all the data has been collected from all the pages. Wonderful. So it's 5,000 rows of data. Uh, so one of the things that we could do is maybe we could clean it up. So we can, for example, change this uh, heading into just agency. So I'll go ahead and do that. So I will say call names, all data, and look at the third column. And I'm going to set that equals to agency. And then, so if we look at this right here, it looks great. And then also we could clean up the annual salary to make sure that it's actually numeric. So I'm just going to say all data annual salary. And I'm going to set that equals to um, str remove all. And I'm going to remove, so this would be our string right here. So I'm just going to take this string 
and then the pattern would be the remove the dollar sign and then remove the comma. And then we're gonna pipe this into a as.numeric function. And if I were to run that, it's now a numeric value. And then we can always go in and write this as a CSV file. And then we can say all data and then write this to, for example, Texas Department of Safety salaries.csv. And then if there's any NA values, we can just set them to a blank. So once we run that, and then we look at our working directory, we notice that we have the CSV file in here. There you go, we have all the data loaded up, scraped, and in a CSV format, which allows us to do some further analysis on it. And there you have it. You could successfully scrape dynamic tables from a website using both Arvest and Arselenium. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. If you have any suggestions or any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.